The moon has always been the target destination for human space exploration, where in the 20th century we first set foot. Therefore, returning humans to the moon is the main goal of all humanity in this century. To do that, we need reliable and powerful vehicles. Under the Artemis program, NASA is responsible for reliving America's glory days, given that they intend to re-establish a human presence on the moon for the first time since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. And they revealed two vehicles capable of serving this historic mission, SpaceX's Starship HLS and Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander. But two questions have cropped up, do we really need both, and which one is the best choice for NASA? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First of all, let's have an overview of these two vehicles. In 2023, NASA awarded a contract valued at $3.4 billion to Blue Origin to develop a lunar lander to deliver crew and cargo to the Lunar Gateway under the Artemis V program planned to happen in 2029. To do that, Blue Origin has partnered with a group of companies called the National Team, including Lockheed Martin, Draper, Boeing, Astrobotics, and Honeybee Robotics. They've been building a type of reusable lander vehicle called Blue Moon. The 16-meter long vehicle can carry 20 tons of cargo in a reusable state and 30 tons one way as well as carry four astronauts into orbit. It'll be powered by BE-7 engines, powered by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which provide a thrust of 44.5 kilonewtons or 10,000 pound force. Liquid hydrogen stands out for its high efficiency and clean energy, but at the same time, it is very dangerous because it is flammable, volatile, and is a low density fuel that leaks easily. Remember the tragic explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger that killed all seven crew members on board in 1986? It comes from the fact that a gasket on the external rocket booster failed, causing hot gases to rise. The hot gas gas then weakened the hydrogen fuel tank. It's possible that the hydrogen liquid easily leaked, causing a powerful explosion that burned the entire vehicle. Despite the inherent risks of hydrogen evaporating in space, Blue Origin is still determined to apply it to its engines, such as the BE-4 and BE-7. Under the program, they guarantee to make the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen complex storable by developing and operating a solar-powered 20-degree Kelvin chiller and other technologies needed to prevent the boiled-off liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen phenomenon. Additionally, Blue Origin's spacecraft are required to meet NASA requirements such as in-orbit refueling, gateway docking, endurance time, and the ability to send the required payload mass and crew safely. Alright, so now let's move on to Blue Origin's competitor, SpaceX. The company founded by Elon Musk won the contract back in 2021 against Blue Origin to serve Artemis 3 and 4. Indeed, SpaceX received a $4 billion grant from NASA to build just one crewed HLS. Thus, Starship HLS was born. Like Blue Moon, SpaceX's HLS can also be reused, refueled in orbit, docked at the Gateway Space Station, and has a long operating time. It looks bulkier than Blue Moon with a length of 50 meters, and because it is designed not to re-enter the atmosphere, it has no heat shield or flight control surfaces. Thus, its weight will be significantly reduced and will only consume half the tank capacity in four tanks compared to eight on the regular version. In contrast to Blue Origin's multi-stage lander, Starship HLS is truly a unified whole. The spacecraft will be powered by the super-powerful Raptor rocket engine and use methalox as a propellant, which is a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Its initial launch is scheduled no earlier than December of 2025. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go into deeper details on which one is better. The first thing we need to talk about is the engine. Frankly, there aren't many details about the BE-7, and its latest news is about the fourth series of the booster tests three years ago. The only thing we know is that Blue Origin's seventh version of the BE engine is considered the latest high-performance engine in the Blue Origin family, with 10,000 pound force of thrust. When looking at the image of the BE-7, you can see that it resembles Raptor version 2 in its simple design style. Its predecessor, the BE-4, has 
has a similar thrust to SpaceX's Raptor V2, and will also use methane and oxygen that will power the new Glenn rocket to launch a Blue Moon lander in 2029. But its chamber pressure is only at 134 bar, half that of Raptor's second version, since Jeff Bezos does not dare push it to the final frontier and then upgrade it. By settling the engine down, he hoped to get the engine off the ground soon, particularly aiming to use it to power the Vulcan Centaur rocket in 2020 under the contract with ULA. However, BE4's continued delays due to unexpected technical problems frustrated both the ULA and the public. Its first flight is now pushed to late 2023. Meanwhile, the Raptor engine is undergoing an evolution from version 1 to version 3. Its second version was launched last April and is currently in operational status for upcoming flight testing with Starship. Without a doubt, I prefer the Raptor over the BE engine as well as many others. The first thing that's the most eye-catching is both of their designs. As you can see, for Blue Moon, the crew cabin at the bottom of the vehicle allows the astronauts to get access to the surface of the moon. In contrast, for the Starship HLS, I don't really like the placement of the habitation module on the top of the vehicle. Perhaps the astronauts will use a mobile elevator, rope, or something similar to climb down from a height of 50 meters, not to mention climb up. You can only then imagine how difficult it was to do that in a vacuum when they are wearing bulky spacesuits with heavy backpacks on their back. In regards to the interior of the lander, since Artemis 3, 4, and 5 focus on carrying people, the life support system here plays an important role. That's where I appreciate the Starship more in this regard. And why is that? Well, take a look at how the company designed the system in their Dragon capsule. It's truly impressive. Adhering precisely to the best part is no part criterion, inside the capsule everything is run by automation and integration, as SpaceX has designed the IVA spacesuit specifically for use in Dragon capsules. Indeed, every part of the suit, such as the helmet, the thigh port, or the umbilical cord, is connected to the computer system. Thanks to that, the software will automatically adjust necessary parameters including temperature, pressure, or air mixture ratio inside the suit without the need for manual adjustment. More importantly, SpaceX's life support system has proven to be reliable as the spacecraft has completed six manned missions carrying NASA astronauts to the ISS. If SpaceX showed that its system is superior through Dragon's performance, why don't we hold out hope that it will perform as excellently in Starship's HLS? Meanwhile, although Blue Origin was founded two years earlier than SpaceX, they've so far failed to prove their system is reliable. The new Glenn rocket is still in development, and the new Shepard spacecraft being developed for space tourism is expected to fly next month for the first time since a failed flight in 2022. So hopefully, Blue Origin does a better job at proving itself in the upcoming missions. To put it simply, in the three criteria, engine, interior, and exterior design, Starship is better than Blue Moon in the first two areas. Or in other words, Starship's HLS has the ability to surpass Blue's lander. It could be said then that NASA also realized this, so they chose SpaceX for the first crewed mission. But why do we even see Blue Origin on the list for Artemis 5? As you may know, the agency always chooses two companies at the same time for each of its missions or even more for large projects like Artemis. For example, under NASA's commercial crew program, in addition to SpaceX, they also awarded contracts to Boeing. Despite Boeing's Starliner's severe delays of more than nine years, the agency has has not yet canceled its contract with the legacy company. That's maybe because they fear a monopoly, meaning that there will only be one business providing products and services to them. It would then lead to the fact that consumers will lose their bargaining power. And in the worst case scenario, if that product or service crashes or is delayed, NASA may not be able to find a replacement immediately. Furthermore, the national agency also wanted to create a hidden competition among the companies that were selected to develop their vehicles which would benefit NASA's goals. For example, let's take a look at the case of Blue Moon. The team led by Blue Origin has been very active in finding a solution to store a sensitive fuel like hydrogen in space. It's considered a new milestone in rocketry, useful for future lunar missions, and supporting capabilities such as high-performance nuclear thermal propulsion. Well, that's my analysis of the two new launchers for the Artemis program. Since it's all based on my personal opinion, errors are inevitable. That's why I'm now looking forward to hearing more perspectives from everybody. So please help me by commenting down below what you think. 
Otherwise, that's it folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.